Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video series, I'm demonstrating how you can host an email server and a website at home on your Raspberry Pi for free with the traffic going through your home router. In the last video, we focused on hardening our email server to protect it from third parties using our email server to send emails. We also configured it so that we wouldn't be so exposed to spam coming into our inbox from email sources which don't have a valid domain. By blocking external networks, however, we have made it more difficult for us, an authenticated user, to access our email server from external location. For example, if we have our Thunderbird email client, for example, we wish to use that to send an email via our email server, we can't do that because there's no way currently of saying to our email server, we are legitimate, please let us in. And that's where SASL authentication comes in. It's an approach that will allow us to connect directly to our email server and send and receive emails. So let's get over to our desktop so that we can make SASL authentication a reality on our Raspberry Pi and allow us to access our emails externally. Okay, here we are on my desktop. I'm going to use my SSH alias Pi to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to do a quick sense check and make sure that my postfix server is running as it should. sudo service postfix status. Excellent, it's running as it should. I'll clear my screen. So what's going to allow us to use SASL authentication is an IMAP server. And we're going to use Dovecot for that. Now IMAP stands for Internet Message Access Protocol, and it's what allows us to access emails from anywhere, i.e. external networks. So we might consider IMAP to be an intermediary between the email client and the email server. The email client being something like Thunderbird or Outlook, the email server being Postfix running on our Raspberry Pi. In a previous video, we installed Dovecot. We did so in order to leverage the mail deer setup capability of Dovecot. It gives us the directory structure that allows us to store emails, including sent items, drafts, deleted items, and such like. Dovecot was installed in the etc directory. So if I navigate there, cd slash etc slash dovecot, we should see it's populated with files. So what we're going to do in the rest of this video is we're going to tell Dovecot where the email folders are stored so that it knows where to look. We're going to tell Postfix we're using Dovecot for SASL authentication. And we're going to tell Dovecot to listen to Postfix requests for SASL to complete the reciprocal relationship between Postfix and Dovecot. So there are three things we're going to do in a row. So first, we need to tell Dovecot where our mailbox is located. This makes sense because Dovecot is what's going to allow external sources to access the mailbox. To do this, we need to edit a config file for Dovecot. I'm going to use nano as my text editor because it's nice and quick in this case. So I'm going to type in sudo nano and then dot slash for referencing the current directory, followed by conf.d, which is a directory you can see up here, followed by 10-mail.conf. Press enter. So now we need to tell Dovecot where the mail directory structure is located. So if we scroll down to where it says mail location here, I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to replace it with the following. Mail underscore location equals mail dear. So it's the mail dear uh, system we're going to be using and then the home directory forward slash mail dear. This makes sense. If you remember a previous video, we set up mail dear in the user's home directory. So I'm going to save that and exit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to tell Postfix that we intend to use Dovecot to handle the SASL authentication process. So we're going to edit the main configuration file for Postfix. This is a file we've been to a few times before in previous videos. So I'm going to use nano again. I'm going to type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash Postfix forward slash main.cf, which is the main configuration file for Postfix. I'm going to page down right to the very bottom of this file. You'll recognize a lot of lines we've added previously for our, our uh, hello restrictions. 
We're going to add some more now. So we're going to add the following. smtpd underscore sassel underscore type equals dovecot. This is telling Postfix that we're going to be using dovecot for our sassel authentication. And then smtpd underscore sassel underscore path equals private forward slash auth. And then finally, smtpd underscore sassel underscore auth underscore enable equals yes. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to exit from that. Okay, so similarly to what we've just done with Postfix, we now need to make sure that Dovecot is listening for SASL authentication requests coming from Postfix. To do this, we have to open the master configuration file for Dovecot. We're going to do that using nano again. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash dovecot slash conf d, which is the same location we had the other configuration file, slash 10 hyphen master dot conf. So this is a different configuration file to the main configuration file we used previously. Press enter. So I'm going to find a section called service auth. So I'm going to page down until I find it, there it is. And I'm actually going to delete it and create a brand new one. So I'm going to delete that section there because largely I want to get rid of it. It's just easier to start again. And I'm going to create a new service auth section as follows. Service auth, opening bracket, closing bracket, a tab across. Unix underscore listener and then slash var spool postfix private auth. Okay, so that's Unix underscore listener and then we've got forward slash var forward slash spool forward slash postfix forward slash private forward slash auth. Then we're going to open some curly brackets again. Going to make sure the indentation is nice. There we go. And inside here, we're going to set some permissions. So we're going to type in mode equals 0660. And then user equals postfix. And then group equals postfix. And that's it. So we're going to save that. Now Dovecot knows where to listen for SASL authentication. OK, I've saved that and come out of the nano text editor. The last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to make sure that we can't use unencrypted authentication, which means we need to disable plain text authentication. We're going to do that in yet another configuration file, another one that we haven't yet used, in the nano text editor as follows. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash dovecot slash conf dot d, so a familiar path but then we're going to edit the 10-auth.conf file. Okay, in here we need to make two small changes. I'm going to scroll down using page down until I find auth mechanisms. There it is. Auth mechanisms currently says plain. I'm going to make that say plain space login. So I've just added login to the end. Then beneath that, I'm going to type in disable underscore plain text underscore auth equals yes. I'm going to save that and exit. Okay, with that done, you'll be glad to hear that that's the last change we need to make. You can actually see from our history here in our console that we've edited no less than four configuration files in this video. So it's been quite an onerous video, but all of those configuration file changes have meant that Postfix now knows that it's using Dovecot for its SASL authentication and Dovecot knows that it's going to be listening to postfix requests for SASL authentication. We've also removed plain text auth as is required for a secure email server. So we're over halfway now to having our email server properly set up and configured. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have, please do just press the like button underneath the video to show that you found it useful. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my course, that would very much help me. It shows that people are finding the content useful. So thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.